Well, Jack, he wants to keep his capo. If this was on TV, <laughs> this would be an act. <laughs> well, I've learned one thing. Never put your capo in your upper pocket. Okay. <laughs> That and, never, and never sit on it. And never sit on it. Oh, no. Unless you want to change keys. Oh. Uh, that's another way to use a capo, is it, Marshall? <laughs> All right. Hey, looking out my window at the snow covered ground. These northern skies are cloudy. My heart is southern bound. Back to Dixie. Place that I call my home. I'm packing up and leaving. I'd love for you to come along. Have you been to Mississippi where the magnolias bloom? Down in Louisiana, neath the Cajun moon or Alabama? Have you got Georgia on your mind? Walk with someone special through Carolina in the pine. Come to the Southland, my southern homeland. Warm hearts and gentle people are waiting just for you. Come on down to the land of cotton. Good times there won't be forgotten. Get away and let our southern sun and fun chase your blues away. Take your lover to Virginia, stay there if you please. Lay on a beach in Florida, feel that ocean breeze, old Kentucky. Watch those bluegrass ponies run. And when you come to Tennessee, we'll all be singing your song. Yes, oh, yeah. Come to the Southland, my southern homeland. Warm hearts and gentle people are waiting just for you. So come on down to the land of cotton. Good times there won't be forgotten. Get away and let our southern sun and fun chase your blues away. Come on down to the land of cotton. Good times there won't be forgotten. Get away and let our southern sun and fun chase your blues away. Great. Uh, I know there's a story behind this because you told it to, to me once before on, uh, on our first interview. That's true. There Why don't you tell that story to our, our audience now? We were uh, we, we were uh, Travel South, which was an organization back when we were at Opryland. Uh, they would go all over different places, you know, to, to travel uh, riders, travel tour planners, and promote the, promote the state of Tennessee and, and Opryland and all we had. But they also uh, all these different southern states. So this was a trip, the Canadian Express it was called, and we went up to Montreal and Toronto, Canada, and uh, went uh, back and forth and uh, inviting people to come and visit all these southern states. So the promoter of that thing came to me when we were in Montreal, and he said, uh, Russ, I want you to write me a song and uh, you know that, that features all these states that are with us, you know, t talking about the states and what's in them and all that, you know. And, uh, and let, let's do that, sing that on the last night, that, you know, like it was four days later, you know, sing that on the last night we're leaving. And I'm going, uh, yes, sir, okay. Uh, so I, I get in the hotel room and I'm whining, I'm complaining, I'm going, you know, does he know how much work it is to write a song, like especially when someone says they want it in four days, you know. You know, I, I've got to be, you know, inspired. <laughs> What's this stuff about just writing it, you know. And I said, and not only that, he didn't even say he's going to pay me anything. He just wanted me to do it. You know, I'm going, why should I do that? And Becky said, because you can. He said, because you can. And I thought, well, yeah, I guess I could. And uh, I didn't think a whole lot about it then. Didn't even start it. But the next day, we were on this train going from Montreal to Toronto. And I looked out the window, and I was sitting there, you know, sitting at these little tables. It's really neat. And uh, it was snowing outside. 
And I'm sitting there thinking, boy, that's the last snow I'm going to see, you know, because um, <laughs> when I get back southbound, you know, uh, it was April. I knew it wasn't going to snow in Nashville <laughs> after that. And uh, I just had a little pencil and a little piece of paper there on the table, and I wrote down, looking out the window at the snow-covered ground, these northern skies are cloudy, but my heart is southern bound. And I just wrote that down, just that little bit that I had in my head at the time, looking out that window at that snow. And from that beginning, it flowed. Yeah. Once I got into it, you know, and just started working on it. And, and then the more I did it, the more of a challenge it became. So uh, they had all these booths set up, you know, like for these travel guys, like in the trade show. So I went around the next morning and I saw Alabama the beautiful, Mississippi the magnolia state, you know, all of, you know, uh, uh, Virginia is for lovers, you know, yeah. all this stuff was there right in front of me <laughs> and I started jotting down the different slogans for those different states and what they were promoting. So then it was just a matter of making it melodic and piecing it together Yeah. and that's where that came about, you know, just a little, uh, the will to do it. Yeah. And uh, two things happened. I got a good song out of it, and we debuted that song on the Grand Ole Opry live, and that's what's on our album, is a live recording of that, the first time we ever sang really? it uh, with the band. And uh, two things happened. I got a nice song to sing, yeah. and he never did pay me for that. <laughs> <laughs> How fast did the music come after you got the lyrics down? It always comes together for him. It always comes together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always write, I do melody. Sometimes I write a melody, yeah. and then I'll have this melody in my head, and I, it might be years later that I put lyrics to it, but uh, usually if I'm doing lyrics, that and the, it comes at the same time. I, I kind of form them together. Now, you, you've performed at uh, Opryland USA over 15,000 times? Well, we had four, five, six shows a day, 100 days a year, so about 500 a year. So we can call that a regular gig? Yeah, yeah, we. Actually, uh, they call that we, part time. They call that, that part time. That was so they didn't have to pay us <laughs> that for the time. Because, you know, the park was only open like April through October, so we were really listed as seasonal. You do 500 shows a year and you're seasonal. You know? And you work actually year round for them, but you're seasonal. So you're doing five, six shows a day. Yeah. How much time in between shows? Uh, 30 on, 30 off. Now, how, how do you adjust uh, vocally and. and um, really get into the show each time you go out and do your show. Well, there's a door you go out. There's a door to that stage. And your attitude has to be this 3 o'clock show. These people here at 3 o'clock or mm -hmm. 2 o'clock, they paid the same price the person at 10 o'clock in the morning paid. And we're a professional. This is our job. Yeah. And when we go out this door, those people deserve the same effort at three o'clock that we put out at 10 o'clock. Right. And it's a mindset. It's like doing a play. If you had a part and a role in a play, you wouldn't slouch off because it was the third time that day you were doing it. You're still gonna do that same character and those same things. So it's a matter of attitude. It's a matter of why are we here and what are we doing? And uh, to me, the man that made my life what it was was the guy that paid that money to come in the front gate. Yeah. It wasn't my boss, it wasn't this person, it wasn't that person. Uh, you know, uh, it was that person who paid that money. That's what made it all work. Yeah. So our job is to entertain him and give him his money's worth. And so that's what kept us. And we, I reminded my band of that every time we went out that door. Mm -hmm. This is a new audience. This is a new audience. Let's, let's, let's give it all. Let's give them the same quality show. Yeah, you kind of wish to more acts that that did that because I've been to shows where I've been to a late show and the, the, the performers at that time would just come out dragging, you know, and, and just drain the entire venue. You know? <laughs> Nobody was willing to listen at, at that point because uh, um, the, 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 the people that were supposed to do the entertaining and, and provide the music weren't really up to it. And uh, it's refreshing to see that there are still acts out there like you that go out there and give it 100% every time you go out, no matter how many times a day that you do it. You know, it's really interesting, Bert, but I think it was the environment. Mm -hmm. It was a family-friendly park, no alcohol, 
no drinks in the park. Yeah. And what happens a lot of times around performers is a little wine, a little brandy, a little this or a little that. Yeah. And and what you know, as much fun as you have with it, let's face it, alcohol is like a depressant. It kind of brings down that energy yeah. that you need to do that. Plus it dehydrates. Exactly. So I think that has a lot to do with why in other words, it's best to drink your water yeah. and you know, <laughs> save that for when all of it's over with. Yeah, you know? yeah. What do you do to prepare for a show? Any uh, any like superstitions? <laughs> like uh, you don't walk uh, uh, under more than one doorway in, in a room? Uh, at <laughs> you know, that's a really interesting question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me what we do. And that's what I'm here for. I ask questions yeah, that nobody else that's, will. That's an interesting question. Uh, you know, like uh, preparing for this, we we went over these songs that we want to sing mm -hmm. uh, later on today, but... Uh, as far as preparing, just, you know, I don't think we, uh, I think we said, you know, what are we going to wear today? <laughs> what closet did we leave it in? Does, does my clothes match your clothes? <laughs> and how do, where's the gig? Where do we get there? You know, I, I think we've played so much. It's just, uh, I don't think. So there's no superstitions that you go through before uh, a performance or a gig? Uh, oh, no. No, 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 no. We, At our uh, age, and as, and as old as we are, we're lucky to find the door and the keys to be able to go. <laughs> now, I, I, I got another request, if, if you would, would, would do that. Um, another one of my favorites that you do is, I'll proudly raise old glory. Proudly wave. Proudly wave. Wave old glory. Yeah. You know, this is a really not a protest song. It's a song about... Uh, if someone decides, you know, of course, uh, protesting stuff that uh, they're going to burn an American flag uh, in our country, you know, that, that constitutionally, that's your right to protest. But uh, the best way to answer that is for every one they burn, let's fly a thousand of them. Let's wave ours, you know, show our support. So that's kind of what this song's about. I was sitting on the sidewalks watching the world go by When a story in the morning paper caught my eye It's not a crime to burn our flag was the latest news And I wondered what's this country coming to America's been wonderful to me it's a country where we're free to disagree They'll burn the flag if that's what they choose to do But at least they'll know this one man's point of view I'll proudly wave, oh glory, for everyone to see America's been wonderful to me I'll proudly wave, oh glory, from sea to shining sea. If they burn this flag I'm flying, they'll have to strike that match on me. Oh, she's my helper now. I, I need it. <laughs> oh, glory's flown through many troubled flights. For 200 years, she's managed to survive. Now I may just be one voice in this land. If you love that flag, it's time you took your stand. And proudly wave, oh, glory, for everyone to see. America's been wonderful to me I'll proudly wave, oh glory From sea to shining sea If they burn this flag I'm flying They'll have to strike that match on me If they burn this flag I'm flying They'll have to strike that match on me Oh, 